Cake Talk episode eight. I'm really upset because I picked a cute t-shirt and you can't see it. It says, got a cake. Can't win them all. Okay, let's get started. I have a lot of great questions. Oh, let me make sure I open the questions at the side. Okay. Um, okay, so here is a question from Faith Evans. I love that name. Um, this may sound crazy, but it happened to me. Has your hair ever gotten stuck in the KitchenAid? Um, you know what? You would think the answer would be yes, but no, that hasn't happened to me. Knock on wood, because I don't want it to happen. Uh, when I bake uh, in my spare time, I always actually wear a big like Pillsbury Doughboy uh, baker's hat. Uh, it's only on how to cake it that I've started to have my hair out. And yeah, I'm fearful. I'm actually the most fearful of my hair when I use uh, the blowtorch. So, nope, hasn't happened. I'm glad you saved your hair, Faith. Okay, next question. Um, wow, okay, okay. Hello, it's from Joe Wells. Uh, you know what? I have to Google this. <laughs> I-L-Y-S-M. It means I love you so much. Thank you, Joe. I hate working with fondant. There's always a problem with it. Like it's sticking to my surface, even though I put loads of icing sugar underneath. I've also tried corn flour and it tears or cracks when I finally get it on the cake. Any tips? Yes, fondant is temperamental. Um, try a lot of different brands because they work differently first piece of advice. Number two, knead it well. And if it's sticking to your hands, I like to sometimes rub a bit of um, vegetable shortening on my hands before kneading it, and that stops it from sticking to your hands at the very least. I do prefer icing sugar to roll fondant. You can try doing 50-50 icing sugar and uh, cornstarch, but I like icing sugar. And uh, just, you know, humidity is a big thing. I don't know where you are, but if it's humid, you can't control the weather and that plays a big part in why it's sticking. As far as cracking goes, some brands are are better than others at not cracking and then um, if your fondant is dry, it cracks or if you've added a lot of food coloring to it, that can make fondant crack too, which is really annoying. Uh, it's a good question because I'm actually going to be shooting today and it's all going to be about fondant tips. Yay, because I get so many questions about that. So look out for that episode, and I hope it helps you. Okay, next question is from Natasia Mona. Hey, yo, hey, what's your first baking memory with your dad that you remember, and which was the first fondant cake you made when you started caking? Did it turn out as awesome as they turn out now? Love you and your channel. Lots of love all the way from India. Thank you so much. Um... My first baking memory with my dad would actually be, uh, my dad always used to make like a Swiss apple pie and it's a nice pastry and then sliced apples with cinnamon and a bit of nutmeg and then you make like kind of like a custard mixture with egg and sugar and milk and first you bake uh, the, the shell and the apples alone and then halfway through you start to pour that custard mixture on slowly and let it bake. So that was something we always had in our house. And that was the first thing I baked with my dad. And I still love it to this day. My mom makes it now. And um, fondant, the first fondant cake I made, I, I think, this is definitely one of the first, but I think it was a ladybug because I had bought a book on cake decorating and one of the pictures in it was a ladybug and I really wanted to make it. Um, and I made it for my cousin. So that was the first. Um, I was really proud of it and it was really good. I actually want to do a cake talk where I share old photos of my cakes because I, I need to hold them up because they aren't digital pictures. And um, it wasn't, I mean, my fondant wasn't as thin as I can roll it now. I can definitely see some dimples in it. So yeah, I've come a long way, but I was very proud of it. And that's why I started small. The ladybug was like, it was only as big as you know, my face. So I started small with fondant and I think that was a good strategy. Okay, so up next, hi from Australia, Becky Boo. Hello, Becky. How do you leave, how, 
long do you leave gum paste to set? Thank you. Um, it depends on what you're making. I like to leave my gum paste for a minimum of two days, and that's if I'm making something on the small end. So I don't know if I'm cutting out like a letter of the alphabet or a number or something like that that's relatively flat and not too large. If it's something large, um, like in my pinata cake, I, I set the brim of the hat, um, then I try to leave it for like a week or longer. That's the great thing about gum paste. If you have a cake order coming up and you know it, you can you can start that stuff, the gum paste accessories, as I like to call them, uh, really far in advance. And that's sort of a big advantage because you need to take your time and often those little details are nerve wracking. So it's good to have the time to do them. But I would say a minimum of two days. And that's in the climate that I'm in. If you're in a hotter climate, it, it might be longer because even though it dries hard on the surface, uh, relatively fast the inside might not be set so it could still crack but yes that's my answer i hope it's helpful um okay next question let me go back to some of my instagram questions izzy hi from the uk are you going to do halloween cakes yes i am i'm going to have two different halloween videos one is really scary and creepy and the other is going to be sort of more fun but still uh really halloweeny so i'm very excited i'm actually going to film one of those in the next couple of days i don't know if you follow me on snapchat but there was a preview of me dyeing some cake batter black for halloween okay next <laughs> okay this is from penny yo yo hi i've been using your chocolate cake recipe italian meringue buttercream recipe and seven minute frosting recipe and have nailed them every single time yay that makes me so happy i also now use simple syrup on all my cakes so thank you for being an awesome teacher the question is when making a white chocolate ganache is there any method or tip to keeping it as white as possible and not turning that off white yellowish color no um, yes, it's called white chocolate, but it's actually not white. In fact, there isn't a lot of food that is as white as paper. Um, oh my, my, I did a bad job in my ponytail. Sorry. Um, there just really isn't. And because of the amount of cocoa butter in white chocolate, it just, it does have a yellowish hue. And on top of that cream, which is the other ingredient in ganache is, um, not white either and is actually, you know, is derived from butter. So when it's heated and it's added to the chocolate, you really see that yellowish hue. So there really isn't any tips on keeping it very white. They do make a white candy melt that's a lot whiter than white chocolate. However, I wouldn't use that for ganache because of the way it's been altered and flavor-wise, real white chocolate just tastes a lot better. So I'm sorry. But the answer, my answer is no. Um, the next question is from Haley. Where do you find inspiration on, okay, hey, I should read your, your handle. Haley at Haley YY Catherine. Where do you find the inspiration for your cakes? I know you like to make your cakes look like real things, but how do you come up with the concept and idea based on those things? Um, that's a, that's a really good question. I just sort of am always looking around me at things that I could cake. Uh, now that I have had to cake it, a lot of requests come in from fans, sometimes for things I don't even know what they are and <laughs> I have to look them up. Um, yeah, so, and I, I really get um, excited about things that are geometric or have a lot of straight lines that's just my nap that's what i gravitate to naturally so um yeah i just always look around me i always think in my head how would i turn that into a cake how would it work structurally um i'm always looking for inspiration and now that i have a lot of viewers on how to cake it they often lend me theirs which is amazing so next question is from Piper Franks at PIP.FRAN. What's the most annoying 
part of baking cakes? Um, the most annoying part would be, honestly, my oven timer, which I did a Snapchat of the other day. It is the most annoying sound in the world. And I don't know why I keep telling myself to buy myself a separate timer, one that has a different ring, because I, I should use my phone. I can't stand the timer on my oven, but out of habit, I, I put my cakes in and I turn the timer and it, it goes like this. It's, it is so annoying. And if it, normally, as soon as I hear it, I just switch it off. But if my hands are wet or I'm working on something else and my hands are, um, you know, needing fondant, I get so pissed off when I have to listen to that sound. Yeah, so for me, that's the most annoying part of baking cakes. Um, next. Um, okay, from Lauren at Lauren underscore awesomeness underscore eight. Yes, I'm all for awesomeness. Hi, Yolanda, where do you buy all of your cake stuff, online or in store? I love making cakes, but I don't know where to buy all of the stuff to make them. Um, well, I can tell you where to buy all the stuff to make them. Every time I make a video, I have a parcel shop that goes with that video, and everything I use in the video is available on that parcel parcel shop. I I buy both. Uh, I don't buy in store as much anymore because <laughs> I don't have the time, unless it's something like food coloring or something I need to pick up really quickly. Um, but with cake tools. A lot of them are online, and I've bought so many of them over the years that I've just been collecting them. Uh, but it can be really difficult because some stores, you know, specialize more in this thing, and another store specializes more in that thing. I, I shop at quite a few different places, and so that's why I love putting together the parcel shops for you because whatever I use, whether it's a food item or a tool, it's all in one place with the and it will lead you to where you need to go. Okay, so next question. Um, okay, is from at N-M-A-K-S-U-D-I. Hi, Yolanda, just want to tell you how much of an inspiration you are to me. I love baking and seeing your videos just made me realize how much passion and love I have for baking and being a perfectionist. I can relate. What made you decide to have your own YouTube channel and what advice would you give to others who want to start their own business? And this question also came from Luke at Luke Holland. Would also like to know about starting your own business. Um, when I started my own business 18 years ago, it it was only part-time. I had a job still in a bakery, so I was still learning and doing what I loved, but it provided me with an actual income. And I made cakes on the side for anyone who would take one, mostly family and friends. And that's sort of how I taught myself and how I started to gain uh, tools and knowledge um, and sort of work ethic as well, which is really important when you work for yourself. And um, so my advice would be to go for it, but it nothing happens right out of the gate. I know we would like it to, but it doesn't really work like that. YouTube came about because I had a TV show in 2010 and the creators and producers of that show um, believed in me so much, lucky me, that they wanted to create a YouTube channel with me. So the three of us do this together and it came at a perfect time because I had a child and the truth of, the other truth about baking and cake decorating is it's, it takes a very long time and people don't realize that. So I spent days making cakes um, for people's events and it's very, very time consuming. And not that YouTube isn't time consuming, it is, but I can work, I can work when I want to work and also work on uh, being a mom, which is something I needed at this point in my life. And um, the other thing is you're married to your weekends. So for all the years I was cake decorating before having a child, I was married to my weekends because cakes are always due on the weekend. People get married on the weekend, people have bar mitzvahs on the weekend, but birthday parties on the weekend, it is always the weekend. So the weekend is your deadline, and then you spend that weekend 
finishing up, maybe stacking the cakes, driving and delivering them, maybe doing work to them on site. Uh, so I never ever got to relax on the weekend. <laughs> Um, I still don't relax on the weekend, but for very different reasons. So that's my advice. Go for it, but have a backup plan or have something real in your life that still allows you to express yourself and that you still enjoy. And uh, yeah, that is my advice. Okay, so let me go back to the screen. <laughs> oh, here's a good one from V. Hoang. What is your favorite kind of cake when you were little and why? My favorite kind of cake when I was little was a black forest cake. Uh, just because it's traditionally German and where my dad comes from is near the black forest. And I really like everything about it. I like chocolate cake. I like whipped cream. I love the cherries inside. It kind of has it all. I love the, the dark chocolate shards on the outside. Everything about it. I highly suggest trying to make your own black forest cake because it makes all the difference. Um, yeah, that's my favorite and I still love it. I haven't had it in a while actually. Okay, so next, oh, here's a great question from Tanishwa. Hey, you're here every week. Thank you so much. Or every two weeks rather. Where Were you ever stage frightened while filming? Yes, all the time. Um, I think it helps that, you know, my team are great and we're friends. And so I feel very comfortable. I'm the type of person who needs that because uh, I'm not a natural sort of show person or a performer. Not that I'm performing, I'm being myself, but I am quite a shy person and more reserved. Uh, the only reason I can do how to cake it is because I'm talking and doing something that I love very much. And so it helps that I'm in a room with friends who encourage me and talk to me. And there's a lot of laughing and joking behind the scenes. And some of it makes it to the video, as you can see. So it's just sort of about being comfortable. And that's what allows me to come out of my show. Okay, next. <laughs> Let's see. Let's see. Let's see. Oh, my gosh. Oh, this is a great question from Abby Dib. Hey, Yolanda, I always watch your videos while I do my makeup. They're the perfect length. Nice. I love this. It's like multitasking. Did you always know what you wanted your full-time job to be? Um, pretty much, yes. I, I knew that it would be something artistic. I actually thought it would be something fully artistic. I didn't think food would necessarily come into that. I applied to a, uh, an art college here in Toronto. That was where I wanted to go. That's where I thought I wanted to go my whole high school career. And at the very last minute, I applied to college to become a chef. So I'm not a chef. Uh, I love food. I love cooking. But I ended up choosing the baking route on my own. Um, but yeah, I did know it would be something artistic. For a long time, I thought it would be an interior designer. Um, but it ended up being cake and I think it's really perfect because it's two of my loves together. And I think that's also why I really like making novelty cakes or cakes in the shape of something because in art I loved sculpting. That was more my thing. So yes, I think I did and I'm very lucky and I'm very lucky I have actually been able to do that thing. Okay, so the next question, here we go. The next question is, I'm trying to use my mouse on my iPad. It's not actually working. Okay. Um, okay, so the next question, Samantha at Samantha.Lee, what is the funniest moment slash blooper that you have ever experienced while trying to film? P.S. Thank you so much for replying to my pancake cake. Me and my friend freaked out. Good. Okay, good. I'm glad I made you freak out. Um, oh, there have been way too many funny blooper moments. And actually, I don't know if you've if you've seen all my videos, you can kind of see that the first ones include sort of less uh, bloopers. But then we have so many bloopers. It's like they're golden. How can they not be included? <laughs> and um, 
So when my producer Jocelyn started to include them, I just I just love it because I feel like when I watch the videos, I feel like um, I'm really letting you guys in and you and you all know what it's like for us to film. And even by the time they're edited sometimes and I watch them, I will have forgotten about certain things that happen and then I just laugh hysterically because I forgot that happened while we were filming. The funniest blooper, I, I honestly can't think of it right now, but I think a lot of it is, for me, it's when I um, slip up on my words or I sometimes I'm really tired by the time we do the interview, so I make a lot of mistakes or I can't think of a word on the spot. Those things always really, really make me laugh. Okay, so next. Hey, Yolanda, this is from Rulina. Oh, I can't say your last name. Ab Aboid? I hope I said that right. Hey, Yolanda, where can I watch your show with Casper? I really need to know. Well, I don't actually know the answer to that. Casper and I were on Sugar Stars together in 2010. That's when it aired here in Canada. And since then, it has been showing in different countries around the world. However, I have no control or notice about when that happens. In fact, the only way I ever know is when fans write to me and say, hey, I'm from Malaysia and I watch Sugar Stars. I'm like, oh, and then I text Casper and I say, Sugar Stars is playing in Malaysia because we we really don't know. Um, the show is on the Food Network here and then they sold it to other networks. So I have no control over what country and what time and what network it plays on. Um, so hopefully maybe you can check local listings somehow I don't know it hasn't played in Canada again so even I haven't seen it again um, okay so next question is from Allison her insta handle is musical at musicali do you own a bakery if so what is it called I have to stop by the answer is no I don't own a bakery I never have um, mainly because all I make are cakes for clients. Yes, I like baking and I bake other things, but for clients, it's straight up cakes. I don't have a bakery. Um, Toronto is not the cheapest of cities when it comes to rent. <laughs> There's a little honesty for you. Uh, so no, I don't have a bakery. I take private orders, I meet with people, I do a consultation and then I make a cake for them and I deliver it to them. Next. Question. Okay, this is from at rara692 on Instagram. What is the qua craziest? What is the craziest mishap you've ever had in the kitchen? The craziest mishap I've ever had actually all started or was a combination of things all in the same day. When I first built my kitchen, I got I saved up a lot of money and I got some nice equipment, my beautiful oven that you see, my beautiful fridge that you see, and I also have a very beautiful stand mixer that stands on the floor uh, that you don't often see on how to cake it because it's very loud. And in the position that it's in, you know, you would see my back facing a mixer, so that would be fun for you. But, I, so I got all this new machinery and I love it. The problem is, uh, I had to get to know all of it on the same day. So I thought, yes, I have this big fridge and this big oven, this big mixer, this is gonna be the perfect day. It wasn't. Uh, I started to make buttercream. And so what I did was I multiplied in my head, okay, if I can make this batch of my KitchenAid, I can probably make six times the amount in my stand mixer because my KitchenAid is uh, five quarts and my stand mixer is 30. So hello, uh, no, because the speed on the stand mixer was so much more profound that as my meringue, the egg whites and the sugar beat up, they were literally pouring out of the mixer and I was just grabbing bowls and trying to like pick it up. It was like an I Love Lucy episode. And I set my oven to 350. Uh-oh. Oh, it says I have, 
experiencing difficulties. I hope I'm not. Hi, I'm still here. Um, I put my cakes in the oven. I said 350. I'm like, this is perfect. My cakes were burnt because 350 in my oven is actually a lot higher. So now when I bake in that oven, I set my oven to 310, which is equal to what was my home oven at 350. And then my fridge um, actually made my fondant sweat profoundly and get very wet because it was too humid and it has this fan in it that every time you open the door it goes off and it makes it even colder. It was a disaster. It was literally a disaster. I can laugh about it now but it was a very stressful day. Um, okay so next question is, oh I'm just going to make sure that I do have connectivity because Rachel's going to tell me. Okay um the next question is from leah at underscore leah kx how many cakes do you make a week and how long does one cake take p.s i love your cakes they're amazing well uh the truth is that at the moment i only make the cakes that you see on um how to cake it so usually up until now we've pretty much been filming almost every week so I'll film like two or three videos a week. I spend all that time prepping and then actually filming them and also developing the concept of them. Um, I haven't been able to do orders like I used to and mainly because they take almost a week. And even when I had clients, I made only two cakes per weekend because they're so detailed, I couldn't make more. And also because events often happen at the same time. So if there's one wedding downtown, another wedding out of town, and they both start at five o'clock, how can I possibly deliver, you know, five cakes at the same time? I can't possibly do that. Uh, so that's another really hard thing about cake decorating. You can't, you can't actually pump them out. In order to do that, you would have to have a bakery with a lot of staff and a lot of help. And I've always worked alone. So, and on top of that, I became... Um, a mom and that is extremely time consuming and just growing how to cake it in general there's a lot of social media attention there's a lot of other things behind the scenes that i guess people don't really notice or know what goes into it in order to make just one video a week because how to cake it is like a tv show it is the quality because of my producers it is the quality of a tv show um and so there's a lot a lot of behind the scenes work behind that. Okay, next question. Okay. Um, oh, this is, I like this question. Um, this is from at Little Nugget. Hi, Little Nugget. Do you have a favorite band slash artist? I have many. I'm going to age myself right now. I mainly listen in the kitchen to 90s hip hop and R&B. That is my all time favorite music, probably because I was a teenager in that era. I am so old that the fashion from that era has come back around. That's how old I am. And I don't know how I feel about that. Um, I love Michael Jackson, Janet Jackson. I love George Michael. Can we talk about my love of George Michael? Um, I love old school rap, like, um, you know, original Snoop Dogg. I love a tribe called Quest. I I'm gonna think, I'm going to get off Cake Top and talk and think about a million people I didn't name because I actually listen to music constantly, 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 constantly. I love Beyonce. I can't not say that. Um, yeah, I love I love her husband Jay Z too. Um, I love a good beat. I tend to like bass in a beat, and I just I love rap because I feel like it's a story, um, and I really enjoy that. And then I love just happy music like Janet Jackson and Michael Jackson that I just want to dance around my kitchen because I can't help myself. So that's my answer. Um, okay, so next. Um, oh, here's a good question from Jeannie Morant on Facebook. How do you blow up pictures on the computer without getting it blurry? I take pictures from Google, copy and paste them into Microsoft Word, and it always blurs. 
And how do you print large pictures? Do you just have a large printer with large paper like you did with Rainbow Dash? The answer is no. I'm actually not very um, tech savvy. So I do the same thing. I take a Google image. Sometimes I screenshot it. I put it into Excel and then I blow it up. It is blurry. That's the truth. It's blurry, especially the bigger it gets. If it's a reasonable size, not as much, but if it's really big, it is blurry, but it's just a guide. It's just a, a sort of a guide to help me cut out the shape. The picture that you, I use to like recreate Rainbow Dash, I was actually looking at a picture on my phone because it was a nice little vector shot of Rainbow Dash, very colorful, very bright. So that was the picture I looked at to actually decorate her. But the, the template that I provided on howtocakeit.com, probably when you print it, it will be blurry because it is in Excel. Um, but you just need that as a guide to cut the shape on the outside. Okay, so another question. Oh, let me go back to the... Um, from, oh, wow, okay. Oh, here's a good question from Kit Kat or Sit Kat. Hey, Linda, I can't believe I found you. I watched you on Sugar Stars and I wish I could learn your amazing work. And your YouTube channel pops up on my recommendations. Good job, YouTube. Are you still at Petite and Sweet? The answer is no. Um, and as you can see, if you watch How to Kick It, uh, that's my kitchen and I'm still in it. So the biggest difference between YouTube and television would be that television um, can sort of not be as realistic as reality television would like you to believe. So the kitchen that I'm in on How to Cake It is my kitchen and always was. And Petite and Sweet was a, a separate shop that belonged to somebody else. Um, and actually that, that actual shop where we filmed that, um, that address doesn't exist anymore because we shot that in uh, 2011. So, yeah, um, but I'm glad you found me. Yay. Okay, I think it's time to wrap up. Yes, I think it's time to wrap up. I'm sorry. Yes. Okay, um, there was one other question that I read, and now I can't find it, but I did want to address it. It said, how do I, how do I manage how to cake it being a wife and a mother? And the answer is hardly that's the answer. I try really hard at all three, um, and it's a lot of hard work, and it's never ending, but it's all totally worth it. Um, yeah, you just got to put your heart into everything that you do. So that's it for Cake Talk. I'm sorry if I didn't answer your questions. They're literally like popping up in front of me so fast, um, but I will be back in two weeks, which I don't know what day that is. Oh my gosh. Can I actually get an actual calendar? That is, what is today? September 24th. So that would be on the 8th, October 8th. I can't believe it'll be October. So I will see you all then. Bye-bye.